If you want to get started with Kubernetes for local development, you should consider using DevSpace. DevSpace is an open source tool for developing applications in Kubernetes quickly and easily. It provides a powerful set of features to simplify the development process and reduce the time it takes to deploy applications. In this video I will demonstrate how DevSpace can greatly reduce the time and effort with its powerful scripts and automations for building images, deploying applications to a Kubernetes cluster, enabling two-way file synchronization, enable two-way file sync between local and the containers, streaming logs from the containers to your console, and so on. We'll also explore how customize can be used to create Kubernetes manifest and how Docker files are used to construct container images. If you're new to developing applications in Kubernetes, don't worry, this video will take you step by step through the process. And if you're already familiar with similar setups, but curious to explore using DevSpace and customize, this video has something for you. With so much to cover, let's get started. Before we get started, you need Kubernetes running locally. You can do this by either installing Docker Desktop, which is the fastest and easiest way, or you could also use Minikube. Please consult the documentation for this in the video description. To start with, I am taking the mono repo I've built in my other video, check out the GitHub repo in the description, and converting that to a Kubernetes application. As you can see, I have Docker Desktop with Kubernetes enabled up and running. That also means I have access to the kubectl command. I also have DevSpace version 6 installed. To install DevSpace, all you need to do is go to the DevSpace website and follow the instructions there. Link is in the video description. First, I want to create a few folders to organize the Docker files and Kubernetes manifest that DevSpace will use to deploy the application. Since this is a monorepo, I like to store the Docker files in a folder at the root level. And I do the same for the Kubernetes manifest. Since this video is focused on local development and these images will have development specific features, I will name them with .dev as an extension. It doesn't mean anything, it's just a convention I have. For production images, I would create separate Docker files. Let's start with the client Docker file. For this, I'm going to use an Alpine Linux based image with Node.js 18 installed. I will also set the node env environment variable to development. Next I want to figure out what I need to copy from the local file system to this docker image. Because this is a monorepo I want to include some root level stuff such as the root package json, the pmpm files, as well as the root ts config. I also want to set the workspace folder, meaning the folder where all the subsequent commands will be executed in, as slash app. Next, I want to copy over the entire client workspace folder. As you know, the client also has a few dependencies on Tailwind config and the UI library. So I need to copy over those as well. One thing to note is that the node Alpine image does not come with pmpm pre-installed, but we can easily fix that by installing it using npm. We then install all the dependencies. Finally, we need to expose port 3000 and set the entry point to the command we used to start the client app, meaning pnpm client dev. Next, I continue with the server docker file, which I will fast forward since it is very similar. Now, before we build these images, if you notice, I am installing the dependencies inside the build process of the image by running pnpm install. So it is a good idea not to sync your local node modules folder to your container, since your local node modules might have something built for certain architecture. For example, if you develop on Windows, but run the application in Alpine Linux containers like I'm doing here. So I want to add the node modules folder to the docker ignore file. Next, let's create the Kubernetes manifest that DevSpace will use to deploy the application in the local Kubernetes cluster. To help with writing and organizing the manifest, I will use Customize. So the way that Customize works is usually you have some Kubernetes manifests that are the same for all environments, those you can call bases, and then have overlays on top of those, which apply specific changes for different environments. You could also apply some patches, but for now I'll keep it simple, but I might make a video about more advanced Kubernetes stuff in the future. To start with, every customized project needs to have a customization.yaml file. Here you will find reference to bases, links to resource definitions, patches, and so on. In this case, it will be very basic. I will define the bases as client and server, 
as well as the namespace which I will call demo. Next, I need to write the manifest for the client and server. Let's create the folder called bases that will hold the manifest. Each base needs to have a customization.yaml file which references some resource that we will use. First is the container for the client application. This is pretty simple, I'm copying it here for the sake of speed, but let's go over it. Since this is a development setup, I keep the replicas to one, so single instance of each application. I need also to specify the docker image that this container will use. Here I named it client-dev. As you will see later on, DevSpace will build this image for us. It is also a good idea to set the resource limits for the containers. And this development setup runs TypeScript transpile in watch mode and so on, so it's a good idea to be more generous with the resources in order to have a fast developer experience. Next, everything that requires traffic routed to it needs a Kubernetes service. In Kubernetes, a service is a networking abstractization. We create this service of type cluster IP, which basically assigns an IP to our Kubernetes container so that it can route traffic to it. I also specify that the traffic I'm expecting is on TCP, I call the port HTTP, and that the traffic I'm expecting it to go to port 8000. The backend manifests are extremely similar, so again I will fast forward. So, now we have the docker files created, we have the Kubernetes manifest, what's left to do is to initialize and configure DevSpace. I run DevSpace in it and follow the prompts. As you can see, that created a devspace.yaml configuration file in which we will need to do some adjustments. Let's take a look at it. First, the pipelines, which devspace executes each time we run a command. For example, when we run devspace dev, this command right here will execute. The first adjustments I want to make here By default, DevSpace runs something called app. I'm not using that. I add the dash dash all option here so that DevSpace starts all the applications I configure here. Moving on to the deployment section, it's set up to use customize. It has the path to the manifest. I'll leave it as is. Next, in the images section, we define two Docker images that we need built, the client dev and the server dev images, which we referenced in our Kubernetes manifest. The first image will be client dev. I tag it with the current git commit. I set the path to the Docker file. The context is the root folder. Rebuild is set to always, since locally you might not commit so often, so the commit number won't change, but you still want a fresh image. And lastly, skip push. Since we only use this image locally, we won't push it to an image registry. The server dev image is exactly the same, and here is where the magic happens. I will create settings for each container, first the client. The image selector is how we target the container to apply these settings, and we want to apply them to the container that runs our client dev image. We set up the logs, this refers to the log streaming I was mentioning, I want to enable this and keep the last 100 lines of logs. I'm also defining the port the application listens on. The open section here refers to the URLs that you might want the browser to automatically open once the applications are up and running. And the most important part, the file sync. This is how we can achieve hot module reload in the containers so that the changes you make on your local machine get synced with the containers. We can define an array of paths that we want to sync. Let's start with the client folder. Keep in mind this is a two-way sync. We can define both upload and download exclude paths. I am adding node modules and the disk folders here. I am doing the same for the Tailwind config folder and for the UI library I am only syncing the disk folder since that is what we import in the client app. The setup for the server container is again very similar. Before I start the application with DevSpace, it's a good idea to create a designated namespace in Kubernetes for your application. You can easily create one with kubectl create namespace. I will name this demo and I will tell DevSpace to use this namespace with the following command. Finally, the only thing left to do is to start our application in development mode. For that, you can run the DevSpace dev command. This will build the images and deploy the manifest to Kubernetes. It will also stream the container logs and forward the necessary ports. It will even open the web browser for you. Now that's what I call developer experience. In summary, I encourage you to check out DevSpace and give it a try. Kubernetes can be intimidating at first, but with tools like DevSpace, getting started is pretty easy. Do you have any questions about developing applications in Kubernetes? Write a comment below. 
Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe for more content like this.